If you know me, you know I am very proud of the food of my people and I'm very passionate about it. Oh, hello! Welcome to my kitchen. If you know me, you know I am very proud of the food of my people and I'm very passionate about it. And I realized that there's a lot of things that we use around the house that's a little unique to other cultures. I remember I was like 25 years old when I found out that there's such a thing as a grapefruit spoon. And I wanted to show you all my favorite Asian kitchen cooking essentials that help me with my Chinese cooking, but also cooking the food that's within my continent. My goal in life is to be the auntie in Kung Fu Hustle. I'm aspiring to be a sea lion and I am halfway there. So let's get started. A staple within all Asian households is a steamer basket. But what you may not know, and this is something my mom introduced to me, are steamer liners. Now for home cooks, that don't really know how to prevent sticking and you want to minimize oil around the house. We make frozen dim sum every couple of weeks and we use a steamer liner to prevent all the dumplings from sticking because it's kind of a bitch to wash the bamboo. I know the always pan is very popular right now. I don't know if it's for us yet because we're not great with Teflon. We always burn our Teflon because we cook on such high heat. And I also feel like I don't need the steamer basket because I already have this. So I put this over our wok. Please don't judge my wok. Like I said, we're not good with Teflon and we keep fucking it up. So we need to get like a proper stainless steel wok. This is just what we have for now. And we just fill it up with water and we use dim sum. So it is a Poor man's way of using the always pan, but this is just legit what Asians have been doing all this time. This was a gift from my mom, but you can find this at any Asian supply store. But one of these you can also find, and I'll link everything that I know I can find online in the description. I just bought this recently. I pretty much fell for the color and the matching spatula, but this has been life-changing. I love eggs of any kind, steamed eggs, scrambled eggs, boiled eggs, but I love making tamagoyaki. It's a great snack, it's a great breakfast, it's something that can be eaten cold, can be eaten hot. And I've always tried to make it on a regular pan and it's always messed up. If you make eggs regularly and you need a small pan anyways, this is for you, but if you need something to perfectly shape your tamagoyaki, this is it. And having a matching spatula that perfectly fits the width of the pan is also very important, I realized. I buy a lot of stuff off AliExpress, and this pan was a splurge. There's cheaper versions on Ali going for about 20, this was 40, and it's simply because of the color, but also the make of it is great. I just realized that this red plastic. It's a heat activated indicator. Once the pan is hot enough, this turns white, which is crazy. Maybe that's why this was worth $40. So before you think about buying those small circular egg pans, consider this one because this was life-changing. I love, love, love this pan. I use it almost every day. The spatula has a little lip so that you can rest it on the stove and not get your surfaces dirty. This, this little handy tool, I grew up using an egg slicer. It was a pretty big plasticky thing with the four wires that go down and cut your eggs into slices. I've not had one since, but I do miss it. So instead of taking up precious drawer space, I got myself 
a cheese slicer, but this is also great for cutting eggs. The idea of this is great, the execution was not so great, but I think if you get a good, good quality cheese slicer, this thing comes super in handy around the house for cutting boiled eggs, and it saves you from having to clean your big knife. There we go. Perfectly uniform slices of cheese. Ta-da! Knife though, actually. This, <laughs> Stefan's dad bought us. We have a lot of bougie knives. I don't mean to always say this, but Stefan's dad is a chef and this is chef certified. He found it when he went to Vietnam and then sourced it on Amazon. It's called a Kum Kum knife. It's a Thai knife. It's very lightweight and very well built, apparently. I don't know anything about knives, but this replaces this. <laughs> this is heavy duty shit. This is like cutting through meat and bones. This is the cleaver that I grew up with and this we use every day. It's a very thin blade. It cuts very well. If you're thinking of getting into Asian cooking, a cleaver is very important. I have three cleavers. This was my grandma's and when she passed away, this was my memorabilia item that I got from her. Everyday knife, cut off your boyfriend's dick knife. My mom loves kitchen gadgets. This one I use often, uh, the avocado saver. Garlic chopper that is a bitch to clean. And a zoodler, never use it. Sorry, mom. I love you. We had a magic bullet. She's like the as seen on TV queen and I am the shopping channel. If you're truly looking to level up on your Asian, you need a hot plate. You would think that this was a college staple, but it is also a Chinese staple in the household. We don't eat on the dining table. We only eat on the coffee table in the living room because we're adults and we watch TV while we eat. Something that we love to do for our pandemic date nights is to do either a hot pot, a Korean barbecue, or making okonomiyaki. All three of those we cook while we watch TV or watch a movie. A hot plate just gives you a fun cooking experience. As a lover of buffets and all interactive eating experiences, I love the novelty of a hot plate. This one we just got at our local Canadian Tire. It's the uh, 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 induction. Ha ah, it says right there. It's an induction cooktop, so it doesn't get hot unless it's reacting to the right metals. So one of these are great to have around the house. And if you wanna do like level up, level up Asian, a hot pot pot with a split. There's different types of hot pot. Because I'm Cantonese, we don't season our food much. There's not a lot of spices. So I grew up having hot pot with just water. And then as you cook, the food that you boil in the water is what flavors and turns it into a broth. But I know other parts of China, they start with like a hot, spicy, oily base. So you can have best of both worlds in a split pot. So then I'll always have one that has satay sauce and then one that's either plain water or broth. You can fight it out in the comments and let me know what your hot pot soup base is. But yeah, I'm still just a basic water girl. For cutlery, I bought this set from AliExpress. It was a 30 piece set for $35. I've seen a lot of cutlery online. Cutlery can get pretty pricey and a lot of cutlery don't come in nice shapes that I prefer. Eating food with the right cutlery is very important. The knife, first of all, I find that the knife is very uniquely shaped. It's perfectly serrated that it actually does cut through quite a lot of things. Not a steak knife, but I don't really eat steak that much. My favorite is the spoon. Now, this 
is maybe the perfect soup spoon. I know that Chinese people would argue, like my dad loves the traditional Chinese spoon, but I prefer Western spoons. It scoops up the perfect amount of food. It's got a huge base to shovel food better into your mouth. This set came with a big spoon, a teeny tiny spoon, two sizes of forks, as well as the knife. And I find none of it has scratched yet, but Steph told me that all anodized metals will scratch eventually because there's no such thing as true black metal. And I put this in the dishwasher with no problems. Now, you know all Asian households need chopsticks, but did you know that there are many different applications for chopsticks? I like having different chopsticks for different occasions and in the chopsticks section of my drawer, I have big broad wood chopsticks with a broad tip. This is great for eating slippery noodles where you need a grip and great for cooking. And if you want, you can have extra long ones. These extra long ones are great for cooking and poking around and stirring. I have a whisk, but I still whisk my eggs with chopsticks. Plastic, I don't really use for anything. Metal, this is like the Korean kind of chopsticks with a tapered end is great for stabbing things, great for dumplings, great for sticky rice because you don't want it to stick to the fibers of the wood. I like to eat and get it all off the chopstick. This rose gold set I bought off AliExpress for $1.50 a pair and I have 10 pairs of these. So there's different situations where you need a different chopstick and I have at least four. Something that I bought that's coming in the mail but is something that I see in every household and is very useful, especially if you hate chopping garlic. I hate chopping garlic and onion and usually we have a big tub of pre-chopped garlic which is cheater and not as good but it works. We're used to seeing planers but a grating bowl is just a textured bumpy bowl that you rub your garlic and ginger over because having big chunks of ginger is not tasty. It grates your garlic and ginger into a paste and it's great especially if you're making sauces where you want that flavor but you don't want to bite into big bites of spicy. And then I got this dinnerware set. I mean, it's not an Asian thing, but I got it for super cheap. So I have never in my life owned matching dinnerware, matching cutlery, and now that I am 30 years old, I came across this sale at Canadian Tire. They have their in-house brand called Canvas. This is a 40 piece dinner set, was on sale for $70. They're super heavy and the bottoms are very rough and they've scratched up a lot of my tables. But when we moved out of our first apartment, I just took bowls from my parents. Sorry, mom. It's time to give those bowls back. This is the most affordable set I've seen online. And I love that the plates have lips. The raised edge means that I can eat pretty freely without spilling things. I can carry it around pretty easily. And they all have a stackable ability. So the cups, the bowls, and the plates can all be stacked. These small plates are great for everyday use. This gigantic plate is great for serving. They have this pasta bowlish shape and then a small soup bowl. What they are lacking is a big bowl for noodle soup. But otherwise, I would say that this 40 piece set covers just about everything needed for my everyday use. I don't like doing dishes. I don't really do the dishes. I know a lot of immigrant households, they don't use their dishwasher, they use it for drying. But actually I learned, especially with high efficiency dishwashers today, it uses less water than hand washing and it saves time. But I grew up having my parents saying, you always have to rinse your dishes before putting them in the dishwasher. I don't really do that. I just shove them in there. But when I do hand wash things, I discovered this product that is amazing. What? This? is a silicone sponge. It's controversial. A lot of people that have used it, that have come over and done the dishes for me, either they hate it or they really like it. And I love it. I also have a foam soap dispenser, which really helps. The soap dispenser already has the lather going because it's not great at building lather, but 
The benefit of this sponge is that it's great at cleaning because it's so flexible, it gets into all the nooks and crannies, and it never smells. I've never replaced one ever, and so I bought a seven pack off Amazon for 12 bucks, and I've given them all away because I don't need that many. Literally just one, that's it. It's completely stopped me from buying sponges, and I will never go back. I do still need a brush here and there, so I do use a pot brush, but otherwise, that's it. No more sponges. Those are my top 10 Asian food essentials that I need in my kitchen. It makes my life so much easier and it optimizes my cooking. I would love to know what tool that you use from your culture that is essential for your kitchen. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. You can find me on all social at Q, and I will see you next time. Bye!